What's up guys, how are we all doing? Back with another video. Hi guys. Uh, it has been probably like a year and a half since we've done Oversimplified. I know, it's been forever. It has been, it's been so long. Obviously we've been doing the Star Wars stuff and we took a bit of a break when we was moving houses and mm -hmm. living in different parts of the country. But for those that haven't joined us in a while, hello and welcome back. Um, yeah, a few people have been waiting for this kind yeah, of content yeah, again. Yeah, exactly. Day. And as yeah. much as we love doing the Star Wars because, you know, it's close to my heart and it's cool to see you experience it. Yeah. Oversimplify something we both love equally and yeah, I'm excited. can experience for the first time. Mm. So it's a bit um, nostalgic watching this. Yeah, exactly. For ages. Oh, yeah. Um, so straight into the first Punic War, uh, admittedly, something I don't actually know that much about other than it was against Carthage, it Rome versus Carthage, obviously. And there was three of them in total. Although I think there's only two ever simplified videos, so maybe they'll cover them. I, I have no idea, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't really know how it's going to work, but uh, I'm looking forward to getting back into it. I've, I've missed the animation style of ever simplified. Yeah, yeah, to be fair, yeah, I, I really enjoyed them last time and I'm excited. Yeah. Um, right, should we get straight into it instead, yeah, of, yeah. instead of talking? It's going to be weird doing such a short video. So only 30 I know, minutes yeah. is this. But uh, right, let's go. Oh, and uh, like, comment, subscribe, everyone, all that good stuff. Um, and feel free to drop any like uh, suggestions or comments in the video stuff you want us to check out or react to. Yeah, now that we've done with Star Wars, it'd be nice to know like what yeah. other things people want to see us do. Yeah, uh, Revenge of the Sith has still got to be uploaded, but that's copyright and that is just insane. But uh, but yeah, anything you want to say, just drop it in the comments, man, and uh, we'll be doing these as much as we can. Obviously, we both work, but as much as we can. Yeah. This right. video was made possible I by NordVPN. Click the link below and Even get an this exclusive voice, deal with yeah. a huge discount yeah. and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Introducing our new, glorious, breathtaking bucket plushie. Limited hmm. quantity, available now. Along with some Punic War character pins. Buy them, or I'll marry your mother. It's <laughs> your choice. Oh, Marcellus! <laughs> you have a lot of dignitas. <laughs> okay. Well, wow. 99 problems. Mm -hmm. Hey, Dad. Hi, son. Just reading the newspaper. What can I do for you? Well, you know how you always say Rome is the greatest civilization in the world? It bloody well is. Well, I was just wondering, what makes us so great? How did we come to be? Wow. My son. Boy. Let me take you on a journey. To this side of the room. The story of Rome begins with these beautiful baby boys going to town on some she-wolf mommy milkers. That's gross. You're gross! Uh, sorry, son. You're not gross. I love you. They're called <laughs> Romulus and Remus. And when they grew up in 753 BC, they founded Rome. But there was just one problem. They couldn't agree on which of them should be the king. But they worked it out peacefully, right? <laughs> oh, heavens no. Romulus caved Remus's skull in with a shovel. Here's a picture. Our first king committed fratricide? I know. <laughs> Look at his face. When's the part where we get <laughs> the greatest civilization, Dad? <laughs> well, you see, at first Rome was full of men. Oh, yeah. I'm talking like a real sausage party. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. So we invited some neighboring <laughs> cities over for a big feast. And then we literally kidnapped all of their women. Here's a picture. <laughs> Look at that one. <laughs> She's like... <laughs> Is that really what happened? Up. You're messed up. I must have. I don't know the ins and outs, but I'm assuming it's, it's correct. <laughs> I forgot, like, the, the humor of this. It's just so weird. It's just brutal, isn't it? Oh, sorry. Sorry. I'll be a better father. I promise. So then, finally, after centuries of monarchy, those tyrannical kings started getting a little too big for their britches. So we overthrew the kings and established Rome as a republic. Is that when all the killing stopped? <laughs> Heavens no. That's when the killing surged, baby. We went wild and conquered the Latin League, the Samnites, the Etruscans. Woo! What a rush. Dad, Rome seems pretty barbaric. You're barbaric! Oh, I forgot to tell you about the time a prophet told Saturn his son would one day overthrow him. So, so Saturn literally ate his own son seconds after he was born. I don't want to see a picture. Here's a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that! That's messed up, man. Are we really this uncivilized? Hey, hey! If we were so uncivilized, would we use communal toilets where we all fart and poo together in one big stinky, steamy, dirty toilet room? Yeah, Dad. We would. Clean your butt with a sponge, Timulus. But all these guys just used it. What's wrong with your son, bro? I don't want to be Roman. This is so weird. <laughs> You're weird! Uh, sorry. 
you're not weird. I'm sure you're probably fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the sign you got the wrong, wrong end of the stick come from. Really? Oh, yeah. is that? Oh, I feel like people were messed up in it. That's gross. Yeah. It, the weird part is when they come to Britain, that's where they actually, as far as I know, we were using soap at the time and they was like, whoa, what's this? Oh yeah, they didn't used to use soap. We used to no. get in the big bath, didn't The big they? communal bath, yeah, man. <laughs> the Roman Republic, a nation that, since its foundation, had been stabbing necks all the way down the Italian <laughs> Peninsula. But this isn't the famous Roman Empire that ruled the known world. Not yet anyway. This is a relatively juvenile realm, still just a regional power. In 264 BC, the big daddy of the Western Mediterranean was Carthage. Let's rewind a bit. Carthage was founded in 814 BC when some Phoenicians in Tyre had a mega surplus of goods and decided to export those goods across the Mediterranean. They became the dominant trading power in the region and to support their growing trade network, the Phoenicians established a number of colonies, one of which was Carthage. Therefore, Carthage began its life as a Phoenician trade colony, and the Carthaginians were actually Phoenicians. Or, if you're a Latin-speaking Roman, they were Punic. Hence the name of the video. Oh. <laughs> Over the centuries, Carthage gradually expanded and became the region's base of power. Just like Rome, Carthage was a semi-democratic republic with its own senate and judiciary. But there were also some pretty hefty differences between the two. While Rome was big into farming and stabbing people in the neck, the Carthaginians, on the other hand, just like their Phoenician forefathers, had built their power through trade and navigating the waves. They went here and there, selling ivory tusks, gold, and slaves. And as a result, they were rolling in it. Whenever they weren't busy swimming around in their copious hordes of money, in their spare time, they also possibly enjoyed sacrificing their children to Baal, the god of... Let me just check my notes. Ah, yes. Wait, Plant fertility. What? what? These are sacrifice their kids. Sacrificing people was still pretty common back then. Not common, but like a lot of civilization still done it. Oh my god. Yeah. I guess that's how you'd stay rich though. Yeah. Kids suck your money. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if Hannibal was in the Punic Wars. I'm trying to figure out if that's a separate time, but I'm pretty sure Hannibal was the Punic Wars. Well, we're going to find out, but I hope he is. Oh boy, these fakes Do you aren't know looking a lot too about hard. This? Sorry. Not not the puny cause to be really? honest now. Yeah, probably like Rome in general, yeah, but not about specific time periods within Rome. I have like a general knowledge of Rome. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But but nothing you, you like Roman history. Yeah, but Wow. You think you like this is the thing. You think you like stuff like this and then you go on the internet and you meet some people that just know absolutely everything. Do you know what I mean? So it's yeah. kinda hard to say, yeah. World War Two is definitely my strongest part. Do you know what I mean? That yeah, is, that, I like that's my strongest area. But some people go mad for Rome. Maybe if I throw my son into a burning pit of fire, they'll grow. Have you tried watering them, Dad? Hmm. No, we'll try that second. As a result of all the <laughs> trading, Carthage had emerged as one of the Mediterranean superpowers. But wait, they said, Rome? What the heck is that? Well, I know it's a pretty obscure little country that you've probably never heard of. But this spunky young nation was about to upset the entire region's balance of power. Initially, the two sides enjoyed relatively friendly relations, and it even signed a couple treaties. But it was a relationship that was practically destined to turn sour. See, Rome had a thing where they liked to aggressively expand their boundaries, often viewing such expansion as a defensive act. Kind of like when you had to kill your neighbor, because you knew eventually they would have tried to kill you first. Meanwhile, Carthage was extremely protective of its wealthy trade network. So if you put a very strategically important island between them, well, two plus two equals war. Tensions rose, and the two sides began viewing each other with increasing disdain. The hard-working Romans looked across the water at the money-hungry Carthaginians and said, Look at those dishonest crooks. Bet they've never done an honest day's work in their lives. And the Carthaginians looked back and said, Look at those simple-minded brutes. Bet they've never sacrificed a baby in their lives. <laughs> yeah! While war between Good the one. two superpowers seemed inevitable, the event that finally triggered it was a little unexpected. The whole thing began with a few simple mad lads on a wild night out. These mad lads are called the Mamertines. They were Italian mercenaries employed by the tyrant of Syracuse. Here, 
But when he died, his successor said, Sorry, fellas, we don't need any big burly men with sharp sticks anymore. You can all go home. The Mamertines, as it turned out, didn't want to go home. So instead, they went to the nearby town of Masana and said, Hey, man, we are but poor little buff boys without a home. May we come in? Aw, poor fellas. Sure thing. Ah, ah. Just so long as you promise not to massacre all of us. <laughs> we promise. The Mamertines then massacred all of them. Well, <laughs> just the men. And they stole their homes and families. Ha! This is my house now. This is my best dad ever mug now. And you guys are my new family. Son, wanna go play catch with your old papa? You're not my real dad! Ugh, teenagers. Am I right? Right, dear. Can you imagine actually living back then though? Because I know it was never as simple as that, but like someday you could just be living your normal life if you were just like a regular normal person. Yeah. And then just like you lock outside the city walls and like a few thousand men have rocked up. And, and they're gonna like, come and steal your house. Yeah, just steal everything and kill you. And he's just like, what the fuck, man? Do you know, do you know what I mean? Like there's nothing you could have done. You know when they said that they were Italian? Yeah. Uh, so was Rome not in charge of all of Italy though? So were they not Romans? So we call it Italy today, but obviously back then it, the Romans called it Italia. Oh. But it was made up of like different factions is my understanding. And then Rome come along and become the ruling faction in Italy. Oh. But it was just referred to as Rome. Rome is the city, obviously. Yeah, yeah. It was still Italy. So and those then, Italian soldiers... Um, they were just Italian born. Italian born. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And they're but they're not Roman soldiers. No, and they're far, fighting in modern day Sicily. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, okay, okay. You're not my real husband. Ugh, I'm so trapped in this marriage. Then get <laughs> out! No, Misano was <laughs> controlled by the Mamertines, and they began raiding up and down the Syracuse coastline. When the new ruler of Syracuse saw this, he wasn't happy. The Syracusans began fighting back, and in response, the Mamertines said, Oh crap, they're fighting back? What do we do? Quick! We'll convince the Carthaginians to come and save us. Oh no! We're in trouble. And we need a big, strong <laughs> empire to come and rub our bellies. Why are you saying it like that? <laughs> if I was a big, strong empire, I think I'd like to be seduced. <laughs> <laughs> it's working! The Carthaginians had long dreamed of controlling all of Sicily. They had been fighting Syracuse and their Greek influence on the island for centuries. And now, here was a great opportunity to get one over on them. So Carthage promptly answered the Mamertines' cry for help and sent a force to garrison Messana. As it turned out, however, some within the ranks of the Mamertines weren't too happy with the occupying Carthaginians, and they sent out a second cry for help to Rome. When it reached the Roman Senate, they were a little more hesitant. Going to help the Mamertines ran the risk of triggering an all-out war with Carthage, and they had only just finished conquering the Italian peninsula, so they were kind of tired. Plus, the Mamertines were all the way across the water. They had never made a leap like that before. <laughs> so you would assume that to avoid any conflict with Carthage, the exhausted Romans would probably sit this one out. But... Yeah, it doesn't sound like Rome at all just to sit one out, does it? No, I was gonna say, Rome, Roman soldiers would jump at the chance to go and have a slaughter, wouldn't they? I, don't, I suppose if you've been in a, a war long enough, I suppose the people are tired, everyone's tired of war. You need a chance to recoup, don't you? Train more men and that. Because the thing is, the problem that they would have had is, not that they would have had, there's only a limited supply of young lads, isn't there? You know yes, what I mean? If you keep sending them off to war, they can't recoup. It's not like the modern day we've got 7 billion people on the planet. No, yeah, true. But yeah. Probably just have to wait it out a little bit till the right time. They've got yeah. enough people. And plus, I suppose if a mum sends a son off the war and he dies, and then by the time my next son rolls around, there's a new war starting, you'd be like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> you would assume wrong. Rome just couldn't resist a good chance for war. Why? Mm -hmm. Well, there's something you got to understand about Rome. See, as a republic, they were hell-bent on preventing any one man from ever gaining too much power. And so rather than having one leader, Rome had two, called consuls, who shared power. These consuls could also only serve for one year at a time before new consuls were elected. These measures to limit the powers of the consuls were noble, but had an interesting side effect. The consuls knew they had just one year to try and gain as much glory and prestige as possible, something that was very important in Roman society. And the best way of gaining glory and prestige 
military victory. Of course, the Roman political system basically ended up encouraging these consuls to go out and be as aggressive as your Italian grandmother when you don't eat all the spaghetti. And so the glory-seeking consuls convinced the people to vote in favor of going to Messana. And in, they went. Upon the arrival... Is that because if the two people were in charge yeah. and they won like a major war while yeah. it was under their power, they would be like famous? Yeah, and I suppose after you're a consul, you can go into another position of power where you can serve more than a year. Oh, okay, so that like, oh, they won this war under us. Yeah. So it, we are entitled to more. Yeah, I suppose you want to secure as much luxury in the long term as possible, don't yeah. you? Yeah. If you give them one year. But that, that, that was interesting. Um, I didn't know that, if I'm honest. I know more about like, how things worked in the Senate, but Republic Rome was something I never really knew much about. I thought there was just always an emperor in charge of Rome. So the, there's an emperor that's elected by the Senate. Oh, okay. So like the, the Senate has ended up killing Julius Caesar, for example. Mind you, Julius Caesar was an emperor. So the first emperor of Rome was um, Aurelius, Octavian. So that was, it went through different stages. Okay, so it was Republic, Senate, Emperor, wasn't it? Oh, so it's at levels of. It well, it just as it just as it progressed through time. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, that's right. Yeah, because Marcus Aurelius was Caesar's grandson. Um. Yeah, that's right. Rival of the Romans, the Carthaginians in this city, amongst the confusion, were forced to leave. Now, in contrast to Roman aggression, the Carthaginian military had a slightly different philosophy. All right, kids, listen up. If you want to grow up to be Carthaginian military leaders, there's a few things you have to understand. If you fail to succeed on the battlefield, that's a crucifixion. Showing cowardice, that's a crucifixion. Hello, sir. What, what are you doing here? Aren't you meant to be in Messana? Yeah, but the Romans showed up. So you just left? Sure did. Oh, you better believe that's a crucifixion. <laughs> the Roman consuls were awarded for victory and therefore tended to be aggressive go-getters. By contrast, the Carthaginian generals were brutally punished for failure, and so they tended to be more cautious and restrained. This dynamic is helpful for understanding some of the crazy things that happened during the Punic Wars. That's interesting so, dynamic. The so Romans had crossed the way. Yeah. Side, and now there was some red on the island. Hit that panic button. <laughs> <laughs> this turn of events was unacceptable to both Carthage and Syracuse. So the tradition. So now we're basically at the starting line for when you start a Roman campaign in total war, right? That's basically how it works, isn't it? Because you got the House of Scipio over here, you got the Greek nations down here, and you got the Carthage over here. You love total war. I love total war. I'm not gonna lie. A lot of the knowledge about Rome comes from total war, and after that, it's just bollocks. <laughs> It doesn't quite beat Empire Total War for me, but it's up there. National enemies teamed up to kick the Romans off their island. They surrounded the city and said, Hey, you jerks, this isn't your <laughs> island. Come out of there at once. Okay, we're coming. See, Bill, <laughs> you just gotta speak with authority. That's what being an alpha male's all about. Hey, man. Uh, <laughs> oh, you, you brought your weapons and armor? No, I, I didn't mean... Oh crap. Out the Roman legions came to engage the Carthaginians in battle <laughs> and they yeah, the Romans are. With the Battle of Messana, whether intended or not, by going to help the Mamertines, the two sides had just slipped into an all-out war. With the initial Roman victory, towns across Sicily, including Syracuse, began switching allegiance because being a winner is more fun. <laughs> the Carthaginians weren't about to just give up that easily. In 262 BC, they began building up their forces at Agrigentum. So the Romans, being aggressive go-getters, aggressively go-got them. The Romans immediately laid siege, hoping to starve out the Carthaginian garrison. However, because this was the first time Rome had been fighting outside the Italian peninsula, across the water, they struggled to supply their forces, <laughs> and before long, the Romans were as starving as the Carthaginians they were besieging. They had to forage for food, leaving them open to ambush. And when Carthaginian reinforcements arrived, creating a double siege, things <laughs> got really bad. Everybody starved each other for months until nobody could take it anymore. And they all finally came out for battle, which Rome won. 
Is it thing would have to be like starving as well. I know. Rogue Rogue was just OP, weren't they? Like they were so overpowered for their time. They were just so ahead of everyone. Their infantry was. But they like the mentality as well. It, yeah, it was just their tactics and how organised they were. Like they was organised down from squads all the way up to generals. Do you know what I mean? Like so, when a general passed an order, it just it was just so effective. Mm. They were yeah, they were just like, were Rome. Here's a question: Were Rome the OP, the most OP fighting force relative to their time in human history? So like for me, the only like German foot soldiers in World War Two for like 1939, 1940 were just OP, like Blitzkrieg and everyone. They they were just OP. Do you mean like organized or just brute force though? Just everything. Like the I feel br- like you've got to throw like Vikings in there with like top I don't, fighters. N- Is that not fighters, a Fighters, but I don't think people put Vikings in there just because they were like raiding parties rather than an army. They oh yeah, that's different. true. Like I'm thinking like Rome, kind of like the Germans at the start of World War Two. The British Navy was OP during the Empire. Our army wasn't OP. Like we used to get wrecked on land against like Napoleon and that, but our navy was OP. I'm just trying to think of another example. America today, OP. Do you know what I mean? Stuff like that. You sent CJ Dagger against him, sir. We killed 30,000 while only suffering 7,000 losses? That's amazing. We're the best. <laughs> yes, sir. Whoops. Those are the wrong way around. <laughs> what? <laughs> we lost 30,000? We're the worst. But we won, right? Yes, sir. Perfect. But we Correct. also got our asses kicked. Yes, sir. So are we the best or the worst? Yes, sir. <laughs> the Romans wanted Agrigentum because they were aggressive go-getters, and they now began eyeing up the possibility of conquering the entire island. But they also suffered very heavy losses, and it was clear they couldn't sustain a campaign if they couldn't supply their troops. Here's the issue. Sicily was an island. Islands Man, are surrounded by water. A strong navy would be vital for supplying troops and winning the war. Here was Carthage's navy, and here was Rome's. <laughs> yeah. I think you can see the problem. Historians debate just how much naval experience Rome had at this point. Presumably, they must have had something to defend their shoreline. But whatever it was, it would have paled in comparison to the Carthaginian juggernaut. Yeah, takes, and so Rome to had to figure out exactly what to do about all this water. Come on, men. We're not gonna let some pansy candy ass water get in the way of our <laughs> glorious victory against Carthage. Charge! <laughs> Tell my kids. I love them. We're gonna need a bigger boat. What's a boat? <laughs> <laughs> if the Romans wanted to win this war and obtain Sicily, there was only one thing for them to do. I guess we're just gonna have to go ahead and build ourselves a war fleet, aren't we? From scratch? From scratch. But we don't even know how! Never mind how to fight with one. Don't worry, Hank. We're up to the challenge. Come on, guys. We're Romans. And Romans aren't afraid of anything! <laughs> and so, the Romans worked long and hard trying to figure out how on earth you actually- Chatting <laughs> with a fish on the end. Nah, true though, because I suppose if you've never been a, like a naval fairy nation, you wouldn't have any experienced boat builders. So they never had boats? Not at this stage of the um, Roman Empire. I suppose they've never needed them. All their conquests have been on land, near enough. Yeah. You know. Well, so far they've just been conquering Italy. I think they expanded north into the Alps. I suppose they've never needed boats so far. Why won't they just steal someone else's boats? Because not many people had boats, I guess. Like boats, it's, it's long to build a navy. It takes decades, loads of money, loads of resources to know how to do it. So I suppose, yeah, this would be the first time. I feel like it's mad that back in the day there was actually people that didn't know how to do a boat, though. Yeah, well, to be fair, we wouldn't know how to build a boat today. I know that they exist, though. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I know they become a vital part of the Roman Empire when they take over the Mediterranean. But it's just mad at the time. I never really considered that Carthage would have had a better navy than Rome. Actually build the latest style of warship. In the end, they had a bit of luck on their side. A Carthaginian quinquirin ended up accidentally grounding on Italian soil. The Romans found it and mm. copied the design. While the new fleet was being built, the Romans trained rowers on land. <laughs> and would you believe it? The Romans put together a full fighting fleet of 120 warships what? in just 
two months. A staggering feat. Now, I know what, what I'm thinking. But oversimplified. If the Romans can build a war fleet from scratch in two months, then why does it take you half a year to make a video? Well, my valued subscriber, I think you should shut up. <laughs> what the heck? How on earth did the Romans learn how to build a war fleet? Yeah, true. This shouldn't that? be happening. From what I hear, they copied the design from us, sir. Well, how on earth did they get the blueprint, Carl? <laughs> I, I don't know, sir. But I'll tell you what. If you know, you know that reminds me of Walking Dead, the way uh, <laughs> Rick said, hey, Carl. Hey, Carl, they're in the woods. <laughs> you, you love that more than you admit. Yeah, I love the I love the Walking Dead memes more than the series itself. Yeah. Come on, Carl, they're in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Shane that says that? Yeah, yeah. I love Shane. Worried about people yeah. stealing your data? No. And you want to protect yourself from outside threats? Oh my Don't god, dare. it's a VPN. Me, my if you mention NordVPN, I'll <laughs> scream. Should use NordVPN. <laughs> I forgot how these are always cropping up. I wouldn't skip this thing because I'll stop seeing it. Who convince you to buy things you don't need in an endless cycle over and over until you die? Me neither. And that's why I use NordVPN. NordVPN allows you to connect to super fast servers all around the world, encrypting your IP address to protect your online data from undesirable eyes. What does it even do? Just make you not have like no one would know. I use it so much in American you can search for better online deals in other territories and unlock content not available in your country. NordVPN now comes with a in fact, yeah, I had to use NordVPN for. And if you don't like. I had to use NordVPN for one of the other simplified videos, the uh, the Hitler one. Oh yeah, because we can get it. Yeah, we can get it on British YouTube, which is weird. I don't think you should ever ban historical content. Um, but yeah, that was weird that we we couldn't access. It. Everyone was like, look at the Hitler one, and just couldn't find it. And then NordVPN, bosh. It comes with a 30-day money double advert. Double advert. Look at that. Vpn.com slash oversimplified to get an exclusive deal with a huge discount. That's NordVPN.com. Slash oversimplified, and as always, you'll be supporting my channel. So thank you. Now where were the we? The blue hair. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> the siege at Agrigentum, supply issues, and building a war fleet. So now the Romans have a navy, and it's time to put it to the test. But how does one wage ancient naval warfare? Easy. All of the ships had giant bronze rams on the front. So all you had to do was outmaneuver the enemy and give him the jimmies. Oh. Easy as pie. And so the aggressive Romans set out for some good old fashioned jimmy giving. The concept <laughs> Nias Cornelius Scipio set out for the town of Lipara, believing the garrison there wanted to join the Romans. As he entered the harbor, however, he found himself trapped by a Carthaginian fleet. And in the following skirmish, he was completely outmatched. The Romans may have had a brand new fleet, <laughs> but when it came to engaging in actual combat, their inexperience showed. There was just something better about the Carthaginian ships. The Carthaginian rowers had nicer yeah. abs. The entire Carthaginian <laughs> oh, right. had been Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, but if you've been rowing your whole life, you're going to be used to it. You're going to be ancient, yeah? On expert seamanship. So, when Seaman. it came to water, the Carthaginians were better, and the Romans were wetter. In their initial skirmish, the Romans were beaten so badly that the consul, Scipio, was given a nickname, Asina. And if you're wondering what that means, mm. just drop the Ina. <laughs> so what mm. were the Romans to do? How could they possibly stand up to this Carthaginian superpower? Well, <laughs> there's something you gotta understand Jump. about the Romans. Back when they found that Carthaginian ship and copied its design, that wasn't a one-off thing. Copying their enemies was as Roman as punishing murderers by sewing them into a leather pouch with a monkey, snake, and rooster, and then throwing them into a river, which is a thing they did. Wait, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, copying their enemies. Many of the most famous Roman inventions were actually borrowed. Aqueducts, chariot racing, their gods, even in warfare, the Romans would get pierced by a Sabine javelin, and they'd be like, wow. They'd get hacked to bits by an Iberian sword, and they'd be like, Wow! <laughs> and they copied the designs for themselves. However, Clever? they wouldn't just copy it. They would advance it, finding ways to adapt it as perfectly <laughs> as possible. <laughs> and in the case of naval warfare, the Romans realized if they wanted to beat the Carthaginians at their own game, they would have to adapt. The Romans excelled at combat on land, 
Not on water, but what if, they said, we could somehow turn a sea battle into a land battle. Sounds crazy, right? Well. Okay. I think, no. Are they on about the big ships where there's like a border across them, where you could send troops across the ships like, to board, to board over, that's what he's on about. What, like a plank? Yeah, to board the enemy ships. That's what I'm about. Sorry, I wanted to guess it. I thought you meant like a bridge. Well, yeah, thanks essentially sea. a bridge. No, over the sea? <laughs> yeah. What? What, straight from Italy to Carthage? What the fuck are you talking about? Well, it's land. <laughs> Why are you laughing so much? Mate, you want to build a bridge from Italy to Carthage? It didn't look that far on the map. <laughs> no. It didn't do that. No, probably not. Probably, probably not. They made a couple of tweaks to their warship, and look, here they come again. They must love getting their asses kicked. Uh, sir, what's that tall thing sticking out of their ships? <laughs> Look at that Sorry, thing. can you just imagine voice acting this? All right, he would have had to sit in a room on his own and voice act this. That's brilliant. <laughs> is this one guy that does everything? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh. That'll make him All right, he I mean, look at this. <laughs> oh, it's got a hook in it as well. Oh, get, get your camera out. <laughs> Take a picture of it. <laughs> I mean, how stupid can you be? Let's just add a big wooden tower to our ship that'll weigh us down and blow us over in the wind. <laughs> I mean, what does that thing even do? <laughs> the Romans had built a big That's swinging so spiked clever. gangway called the Corvus. So when the Carthaginian ships approached to ram them, the Romans would just slam them. The Carthaginians <laughs> tried going around. Yeah. No problem. The Corvus could swivel. Try going behind, the Romans would huddle to the coastline. It was foolproof. That's so good. Those big, sexy Carthaginian rowing muscles could <laughs> fix all they want, but they were no match for the Roman mind. So, ladies, you see, what really matters is what's on the see? inside. See? With me. And with that, <laughs> the Romans, who had only just recently began dabbling in the art of naval combat, thanks to their ingenious Corvus, had just managed to outclass the Mediterranean seafaring superpower. The Carthaginians were stunned, and the general in charge of the defeated Carthaginian fleet? Well, you better believe Animal. that's that a piece of fiction. No, no, With their newfound control of the seas, land. the Romans could now more easily uh. blockade coastal cities and supply their legions on land. Surely, the Romans were now free to unleash their aggression all over the island. Ha ha! Hey Carthaginians, what are you gonna do now that we're free to rampage across the island? We're gonna go inside these walls and close this gate. Oh, come on guys, stop mm -hmm. messing around. Come out so we can kill you. No. Oh, come on. No. Oh, no. <laughs> to kill the new <laughs> so nice one the Carthaginians <laughs> decided to engage in a defensive war of attrition, forcing the Romans to engage in siege. After lengthy siege, the war in Sicily became a long, hard, back and forth slug. One by one, cities slowly fell as the Romans gained ground. Occasionally, the Carthaginians countered and even pushed them back, only for the Romans to rebound again. And whenever a city did finally fall, the Romans could delight in slaughtering the entire population and selling any survivors into slavery, which was pretty standard procedure at the time. In general, the campaign on land was progressing much slower than the Romans had hoped, and quite frankly, they were getting sick of it. So in 256 BC, they decided that something had to change. Hey everyone, my name's Marcus Attilius Regulus, and I'll be one of your consuls for this year. Look, as I'm sure you all know, Sicily's being a bit of a drag. Sure, I could go and spend my entire year as consul besieging one single city, but they'll never make a naked statue of me for that. So <laughs> here's the new plan. I'm gonna skip Sicily entirely, take my army, and go right for the heart of Carthage itself. I'll slaughter the men, enslave all the women and children, and when I return, You'll all build a thousand naked statues of me. <laughs> I do think that. Why are they stopping in the in-between 
Ireland and not just going straight there. I suppose it's a, a lot to supply that many an army that far away. Especially if you're going to cut through their navy every single time. Yeah, because then you're in the middle actually of them on that side and that side. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Women and children's stuff. That seems pretty evil and barbaric. No, Jim, it's perfectly normal in the ancient world. Sometimes we even chop their pets in half. Okay, guys, looks like the Romans are coming straight for us this time. And what will they do when they get here? They'll kill us all. They'll massacre each and every last one of us. They may even chop our pets in half. That's barbaric! No, Rob, it's <laughs> actually pretty normal for the time. We'd do the That's same so thing. Who will protect us? Funny you should ask, Mary. That's mm -hmm. kind of why I called this meeting. Who will protect us? Protect our families, our homes, our children. You guys, ha, don't make me laugh. <laughs> Why, you're just a bunch of stupid and weak farmers, simple-minded buffoons, cowards, fools. <laughs> Rob here thinks enslaving women and children is barbaric. You're a snowflake, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> the fact is, if the Romans manage to land on African soil, we're all gonna die. A terrifying, hideous, unspeakably painful death. Is that the end of that speech? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> The Carthaginians had to stop the Romans from ever landing in Africa because they believed that would be the end. So as the Romans were building an invasion fleet, the size of which the world had never seen before, the Carthaginians were preparing an even bigger one to stop them. And in 256 BC, as the Roman invasion fleet made its way south, the stage was set for a humongous battle that saw 680 warships, Jesus. around 300,000 men fighting to decide the course of the war. To this day, the Battle of Cape Egnomus remains possibly the largest naval battle in human history, all the way back in ancient times. So the That's next crazy, time your granddad tells you about the time he sank a Japanese aircraft carrier, kick him in the nuts. The Romans <laughs> had a lot riding on this battle. They weren't just sending their warships, but transports as well, full of supplies and horses for their invasion of Africa. They therefore formed a protective wedge-like formation to punch through the long, thin Carthaginian line. The Carthaginian generals, however, desperate to prevent the Romans from reaching Africa, had a plan of their own. As the Roman fleet approached, the Carthaginian center feigned a retreat, luring the Romans in so their outstretched flanks could envelop them and get around ah. the Roman mm. corvus. A clever plan, but... With such a huge battle and so many ships crowded together, the Carthaginians struggled to maneuver as hoped. And in the chaos, three separate battles emerged across the huge battle space. With the number of ships limiting their ability to maneuver, the Carthaginians became sitting ducks, and all the Romans had to do was start swinging. The Roman center came out on top and were then able to turn around and rescue their pinned down flanks. The battle of Cape Egnomus was a Roman. Jesus, 24 ships lost, 94. 64 of them were captured, so they recouped their losses in the capture. Yeah. It's mad how ancient battles used to happen, isn't it? Because that is probably the same amount of people that died in Afghanistan and Iraq for the Allies, for like the coalition forces, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And back then they'd, they'd just lose that in a battle. It's not when you hear about Chinese, like history, they just go oh, oh, in here in the quiet end of the Yangtze River, two villages for 400,000 dead. And you're like, what? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, were just more people back then, though. I suppose, you know, the battles were just bigger, and it? It, a lot of it come down to just who had more people, I guess, and then like the tactics and that come after, the book, you get to. I don't know, it's crazy. Victory. Oh, it's over? Yeah. Oh, I actually really, time. you know what, I've missed doing oversimplified. It was only halfway through doing that. I was like, this is so good. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I really like, like the comedy they have in it though, but I feel like this is my, this is my level of learning history. No, I, I like it. It's such absorbable information as well, the way he does it. He is like, he is a genius. The, like the editing style, the way he expresses the information, the animations keep you interested. I think he does such a good job with it. He's a, it's brilliant. 
He does. He does do a really good job. I still feel like I have to concentrate a lot, though. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But I enjoy it. But you know, it's you know, there's no, there's no vegetables in there. It's all meat and gravy. You know, yeah. isn't it? Like, he, he, there's well, no filler. Yeah, yeah. Like, he, there's so much more you could have talked about in that time, but he didn't because he sticks. He sticks to the narrative. He drives home the main point of what happened in the Punic War, all the big parts. He doesn't bore you with side information. He does such a good job with it. Yeah, I, I really enjoy them. Yeah, I feel, the thing with that one was though, I mean, you didn't know a lot about that. Mm-hmm. And I never heard of that either. So I was like, what? Yeah. So I feel like, is the second part like, who wins? Yeah, I imagine it's going to be the land battle of Rome, uh, Carthage, sorry. Um, I guess Hannibal doesn't come into it. I don't know why I'm so hung up on Hannibal. Just... Was he around that time? Yeah. With the elephants and everything? Yeah. Maybe he's in part two. Yeah. Is there a part three? No, I don't yeah. think so. Wait, hold on. Was that a tank? Oh, I was going <laughs> to <I was gonna laughs> say. <laughs> but yeah, um, guys, we really enjoyed that. Thank you so much for asking us to do that. Honestly, we, lo- we like doing that. It's nice to go back to doing that. Something yeah, different as well. Definitely. And if there's another separate history series you want to see, honestly, go ahead. Drop it in the comments. One. We'd love to do it. <coughs> or anything of the time. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, Roman history. Could be anything. I'll probably title this one a uh, British couple reacts to it just because that's kind of the, the standard go to. Yeah, stick to the original. Yeah, titles. yeah, we'll just keep it on track. Because also, when I watch a reaction video that's based on history, I like to know the nationality of the people watching so we can get that nationality's perspective of it. Yeah, because I feel like people don't get taught stuff. There's so much stuff that we've done before and you think we didn't get taught it in school. Yeah. And you only know it because you yeah. research it yourself. Yeah, exactly. Like if I saw British couple react to it, that wouldn't interest me because I'm British and I kind of get mm. our perspective. But if I see like Japanese couple react to World War Two, I'm like, oh, that'd be interesting to find out yeah. what they think. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Definitely. Like, that's what uh, people sometimes ask why I put British couple. Oh, but really? it, yeah, not as a bad thing. No. But it's just as like it's just so you know what perspective you're gonna get from that, if that makes sense. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> You kind of went off on a tangent there, but um, <laughs> guys, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. It's good seeing you again if we haven't had you on the channel in a while. It's always good to have, like, old faces back. Um, I hope everyone's doing well and uh, looking forward to Christmas. And uh, Ooh, yeah. we'll, we'll see you soon. Take it easy, guys.